I'm Ed Phillips. I'm the Director of Tourism with the Burke County Tourism Development Authority, and I want to welcome all of you here this morning to this very special event. If you will, for just a moment, in your minds, go back to the year 1776. On this site, this courthouse was not here. In fact, there was nothing here. It was simply a wooded knoll. There were cabins scattered about at a place called Alder Springs, which was the name given to this area before Morgan Town, Morgan's Borough, and now Morgan Tun. Over where Cornwall Drug Store was built, which now houses Calais Gallery, was a wooden log structure that served as the first rudimentary courthouse in Burke County. Meanwhile, back in New York and Philadelphia, the forefathers of our country were crafting these documents. This was a wilderness here, folks. And today, we are very excited to have these documents here before us. At this time, I would like to call on Morganton City Councilman Forrest Fleming, who will come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Please stand and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. I'd like to ask Bob Shepard to come forward with our invocation. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. We thank you for this place called Morganton, this county of Burke, and our blessed land called America. At this moment we stand on ground made sacred by sacrifice. Thank you for the pilgrim spirit. We inherited it and we now embrace it. Thank you for the bravery of soldiers and the wisdom of founding fathers who pinned for us the rights, the freedoms, the responsibilities of life on this great land. Now we are the pilgrims. So as pilgrims, we say thank you, God, for freedom to gather here, to pray, to give thanks for those charters of freedom. Thank you, God, for Vance and Mary Jo Patterson, who made possible these beautiful reminders of our freedoms we are inspired by their vision, their patriotism, their generosity in presenting these significant gifts which this day become a treasure for all true Americans and especially for those of our wonderful area. And so God, we who are gathered here say from heart, from our soul, from words and from sincere silence. Thank you, Creator God. Thank you, Patterson family. Thank you, America. Freedom, grace, and peace prevail. Praise be to God. Amen. This time I'd like to ask Vance Patterson to please come forward.
thank you all for coming out to celebrate the dedication of your Charters of Freedom. And thank you to the people that helped make this possible, that worked with Mary Jo and I to get this done. I'm going to read a list here, kind of in order of uh, their participation of when they worked with me. Robert Salisbury, architect. Ron Lewis, former county manager. Gant Stevens of Burke Memorial Park. Mayor Mel Cohen. Morganton Administrative Assistant Kelly Russell. Morganton City Manager Sally Sandy. County Commissioner Maynard Taylor. Morganton City Designer and Engineer Michael Burley. Contractor Eric Suttlemeyer. The Cold Springs Granite Company. And of course my wife Mary Jo, who I probably should have put at the first of the list for a number of reasons. There she is. This is a uh, this is an educational project that started three years ago when Mary Jo and I traveled to uh, Washington, D.C. to meet with some congressmen and some of the groups up there. We had some free time, so we decided to go to the National Archives to see the Constitution and, our, and the Declaration of Independence, because we'd never seen it before. So we're wandering down the hallways, looking at different exhibits, and then it just kind of opens up into this big room off to the right. You walk through these brass gates, and you're in this big rotunda with like exhibits all around the hall, uh, the walls. And across the way from us were the three exhibits that you see here. You had the Declaration of Independence on the right, four pages of the Constitution in the center, and our Bill of Rights over on the right. This is known as our Charters of Freedom. Now you don't have to stand in line, you just kind of wander around and when you get a chance you step up to the documents and look at them. And it was really incredible, standing there, looking at something that our founding fathers had penned. And when you looked at the signatures, you just got goosebumps, seeing their actual signatures that they wrote. Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and all the others. So you can stand there as long as you want, and then you give somebody else a chance and you move on. Well, we moved around the room, and I found myself standing by myself over at the side right before we left, trying to soak up the whole moment, because I was just in awe of the whole thing. And two thoughts occurred to me. First of all, that I would probably never be there again, because it took me 60 years to get there the first time. And second, most people will never see these documents, even though they're open to the public and it's free. Now, about two years ago, Mary Jo and I were sitting out here under a shade tree over here, attending the National Day of Prayer meeting. And if we could bring that experience that Mary Jo and I had up at the National Archives, looking through those documents for the first time, what if we could bring that experience back to the people of Burke County? And as I sat there, I got more and more excited about the idea. And after the meeting, I told Mary Jo, and we actually walked around and tried to pick out possible locations for the, for the monument. We wanted to have a place where it was high visibility, good foot traffic, and easy access for school children. The idea I had was to put it right along the sidewalk right here, backed up with this, by the tree that used to be here. So it'd be kind of easy for everybody to see, but I wouldn't be tiring up anything. Eight months later, in February, that was in May, in February I started working on the idea, and in February I ordered the first plate of the of the Constitution and that's would you open that up that was in this uh, shipping container over here and it's a life-size document it's on quarter-inch etched bronze and it weighs over 60 pounds and I drug that thing all over the Midwest in the counties here showing it to people and getting them interested in the idea also in February I contacted, contacted Robert Salisbury, the architect, and we started working on some preliminary drawings. With those drawings, I got together with Ron Lewis in March to show him what I was talking about and also to uh, get ideas on how best to approach the city and the county. In April, I contacted Gan Stevens, and we started looking at different suppliers for the materials, the bronze, the, the granite, as to who could do this. 
In July last year, that was in 2013, July, Ron set up the meeting with Mayor, Mayor Mel Cohen and uh, at the time uh, Commissioner uh, Maynard Taylor and some of his people. And we had this meeting and I did a presentation and I was ready after the meeting for two questions. I knew they were coming. First of all, how much does it cost? And second, who's going to pay for it? So I did the meeting, or did the presentation, and I was really excited, and everybody was really excited, and sure enough, they asked, how much is it going to cost? And I told them, but they didn't ask the second question. If you've ever been to one of these meetings, you know that everybody talks really fast and goes in all kinds of different directions. And they, they went on talking about budgets and moving money around and locations, and I had to wait about five minutes before they finally took a pause. And I said, as far as paying for this, this will be a gift for Mary Jo and I to the people of Burke County. And there was just silence, nothing for about 15 seconds. And now I'm thinking, oh man, there's some regulation that says I can't give something to the county. And finally, Mayor Mel Cohen says, that's incredible. That's fantastic. And everybody started talking again in all directions. And I realized this is going to happen. After that, that was in uh, July, in August, I met with uh, Dottie Irvin to get her thoughts on putting this on the courthouse square. And then we had a joint meeting set up between the uh, city council and the county commissioners. And I made the presentation and it was unanimously accepted and everybody agreed that we were going to do this. Now I said earlier, I made a mistake, I said earlier that I would probably never be in the rotunda again. but. There are no dimensions, there are no prints on anything online. And Mary Jo had only seen these things once. So the next day on August 6th, we drove back up to Washington, walking into the rotunda again that afternoon, and we went different directions because we had to get dimensions of what this monument looked like. Now they won't let you just take a tape measure and start measuring a national, national monument. So we wandered around a little bit, and I stepped up to the front edge of it and looked at it, step and then took another step. And I was standing about in the middle. Meanwhile, Mary Jo is actually walking up to the exhibits, stepping up a step and standing next to the front, the back, different points and marking on her body where these things come up. Then we go back to the hotel and we actually take the dimensions. So while this monument may not be exactly what it is up in Washington, keep in mind that this is based on two steps of a short guy and three marks on my wife's body. <laughs> now you'd think it would be smooth sailing from then on, but while you may have worked with the county and you may have worked with the city, you've never worked with a granite company. These people build monuments and mausoleums and they truly move at the speed of rock. It was 10 more months before we got to where we are today. Realize though that this had never been done before and the people that worked on this did it with a passion They knew that they were building something designed to last the next 300 to 500 years And I believe they did a beautiful job Now people ask us why are we doing this and the first thing I tell them is because it's very important Yes, it's really expensive, but it's more important than money. Our founding fathers believed that in order to have a free and independent society, you must understand how government works. We agree with our founding fathers that you cannot control what you do not understand. This allows us to serve our community and directly impact our educational system and hopefully the future of the country. As I said, this is an educational project. We're gonna work with the schools to get them to bring field trips out here so they can explain the founding of our country, our founding fathers, see for the first time what the Declaration of Independence looks like. You'll see up here in the corner a raised plaque. plaque. There'll be another one on this side. Those are to do rubbings so they can take a piece of paper and a crayon and do a rubbing and take that with them. No longer will the children of Burke County grow up talking about the Constitution and Bill of Rights in Washington. They'll talk about their Constitution and their Bill of Rights right here in Burke County. 
We believe this ties us directly to our founding fathers and to our future generations. The effort they made in bringing us a government to serve the people, a government of we the people. Commissioner Carswell, will you please come forward, please? This is a certificate that allows Mary Jo and I to give the responsibility and the honor for these charters of freedom to the citizens of Burke County, a gift from our family to the citizens of Burke County. and Mary Jo. On behalf of Burke County, I am just so honored to stand here in front of you today to accept this gift from the Pattersons themselves. On behalf of uh, Maynard Taylor, Vice Chairman, Wayne Abley, Commissioner, Jack Carroll, Commissioner, Jeff Britton, Commissioner, Brian Steen, County Manager, and Kay Honeycutt, who are all here today, County Clerk, we, we accept the challenge of Vance from you to, to keep these monuments clean, up to date, along with the city, and to, to keep them here for people to see. Let me start out by saying to you, Vance and Mary Jo, no words are adequate enough this morning to describe our honor in being here and accepting this gift. Our, our forefathers had a lot of vision and, and they had dreams, and I've known Vance Patterson for years, and Vance has vision and dreams and he follows through, and we appreciate your guidance and your leadership in the community and, and we certainly do appreciate this this gift that you've given. I came up here a few weeks ago and stood in, in front of these these granite monuments and cold chills just ran over me thinking that 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 our forefathers stood their ground, they fought for what they believed in, just as you have Vance and Mary Jo and, and I, I'm just so proud that you you've given this to us. So on behalf of the people of Burke County, and if gentlemen out in the audience, if you will, if you veterans will stand for me, please, and kind of step forward. There's a lot of veterans here today. So on behalf of the people of Burke County and these veterans that are here today who have fought to make sure that these charters of freedom remain and that this country remains great, we all here salute you, Vance Patterson. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you, Johnny Carswell, for that nice uh, talk. Mayor Mel Cullen, would you please come forward? Mayor, it's been a, a real privilege working with you. I've really enjoyed seeing how you get things done. You are uh, quite a mayor, and, and I don't believe this would have happened without your efforts. So. Thank you, Vance, Mary Jo. I want to introduce my city council, Forrest Fleming, Sidney Simmons, John Cantrell, and Ronnie Thompson. They're all in the audience. Sally Sandy, our city manager, and Kelly Russell, uh, our clerk that uh, worked with Vance an awful lot. Mr. and Ms. Patterson, fellow elected officials, visitors, friends, and guests, on behalf of the Morganton City Council, I'm honored to welcome you here today as we officially accept this wonderful gift to our county. When Vance and Mary Jo first approached us about this monument, their excitement for the project was absolutely contagious. They approached all the groups who are entrusted with maintaining this historic building and its surrounding grounds. They shared their vision of a monument to our nation's most important documents. Today, we're gathered here to honor their vision, their effort, and the results of their hard work. Seeing this monument come together over the past several months, I was reminded of the trips to our nation's capital by my family when I was much, much younger. On one of my times in Washington, included a stop at the National Archives to see the original Charters of Freedom. 
And while I recommend that trip to all Americans, not everyone in this country, county, or city have the resources or the time to accomplish that. Now all they have to do is come to this historic site to admire the wonder gifts of these replicas. It is a fitting as well as we place these charters just steps away from the monument honoring a favorite son who is perhaps the 20th century's foremost proponent of the rights guaranteed by these documents. I believe Senator Sam, who is acknowledged by his fellow senators as the go-to whenever a constitutional question came up, is smiling down on this effort and the placement of these documents into the midst of the people of Burke County. Today, we'll also see the placement of a time capsule within this monument. Plans call for that capsule to be opened in September of 2087, when our, co count, our country marks the 300th anniversary of the Constitution. Very few of us today will probably be on hand at the opening, but our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren will see that day. And without a doubt, as long as America continues to be guided by the wise words contained in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, America will remain the land of the free and the home of the brave. And as we prepare to celebrate July 4th, there is no better way I can think of to honor America than by paying our respects to the charters of our freedom. And as we pay our respects to these documents, it is also fitting that we again say thank you to Vance and Mary Jo for making this wonderful addition to the grounds of our historic courthouse a reality. Thank you and God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you for being here. At this time, I would ask that uh, all rise for the singing of America the Beautiful by Willette McIntosh. should have heard it from up here. We've got just two more things to do. First of all, as mentioned earlier, that we have a time capsule. It's not going to be sealed today. Uh, we're going to do that later this summer when we have a chance to put everything together. In that time capsule, we're going to have letters, uh, first of all, from County Commissioner Johnny Carswell. There'd be a letter from Morganton Mayor Mel Cohen. There'd be a letter from historian Dorothy Irvin. There'll be a letter from Board of Education, Sam Wilkinson. 
and, and there'll be something for me in there. We're going to put some other things of interest in there, uh, some things for the newspaper, artifacts and things like that. It'll be sealed, as I said, later this summer. Uh, I've given the combination to Mayor Mel Cohen. Uh, if any of you are here on opening day in 2087, it's September 17th, mark your calendar, 2087, we're going to open it, and if there's any trouble finding the combination, you know who had it last. <laughs> At the conclusion, very conclusion, we're going to have a cannon salute. And I knew I wanted to do this. Um, I didn't want to have 21 gun salute, so I did a little research on it. As I said, this is an education project. And I found that the original cannon salutes started back in the 16, 1700s. When a ship would be coming into port, they would discharge one of their guns to show respect for the port. And when you discharge a gun, that weakens your position. So that shows that you are, have no hostilities to the port. Well, as the tradition developed, they would turn their guns to sea, they would discharge seven guns, and then pull in. The port batteries would then answer in kind with three, three rounds for each to answer each one. And that's where the 21-gun salute began. Now, I know, as I said, I know we didn't want to have a 21-gun salute, and being Scottish, or Scottish heritage, I was in Edinburgh, Scotland, Mary Jo and I were, and they've got this howitzer that sits up in the old castle in Edinburgh. And they marked the time of day using that, that howitzer. Now, the British would fire 12 rounds at noon, so the ship's captains could set their clocks and the merchants and things like that. Well, the Scottish, being Scottish, reasoned, why shoot 12 at noon when we could wait one hour and shoot one and save 11 rounds? So every day at 1 o'clock, that howitzer goes off. So I knew my number was somewhere between 1 and 21, and I settled on 7. First of all, because of tradition, and second, because there are seven articles in our Constitution. And we will shoot one round for each article of the Constitution. Article 1 defines the legislative branch, composed of the House of Representatives and the Senate. It describes their powers and workings. Article 2 defines the executive branch, the qualifications for president and vice president, their powers, duties, and means of removal from office. Article 3 sets up the judicial branch, the Supreme Court and the court system. It protects the right of trial by jury and defines treason. Article 4 regulates the state's powers and their interaction with the federal government. Article 5 outlines the process of amending the Constitution. Article 6 sets the status of the Constitution as the supreme law of the land to which leaders, leaders including the legislative, executive, and judicial branch, must be loyal. Kaboom. Article 7. Addresses the ratification and declares that the Constitution should take effect if nine out of 13 states ratify. Citizens of Burke County, I give you your charters of freedom.